hello now quickly I will show you today um, how to use several process simulation software to um, especially GMP and then the ISIS to help you um, understand the data and then uh, use the data for regressions and then do the process optimization so we'll take a, uh, a very simple example in this case this is like a n mine scriber we have like a flue gas coming in um, so you can make this case um, uh, uh, yourself uh, and then this flue gas is going to be the co2 part of the flue gas is going to be absorbed by amines and then the uh, co2 is going to be released as in the acid gas over here and then the amine will be then be um, uh, purified in the regenerator and then to be used further in the absorber so that's um, an example so we um, um, so that's the the first step is then to understand the, the process or the problem that we want to have um, and then the, by our domain knowledge we know that for sure that this um, uh, there are two main important variables that we are now considering in this example which is the amount of amines to be used in the absorber uh, so the 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 more amines that we are letting it flow to the absorber, the more CO2 that it can absorb, and then the, the higher the reboiler duty in the regenerator, the higher the concentrations of the amine, hence it will have a higher capacity to absorb the CO2. So these two are the main um, uh, important variables. And then obviously we have like a, a fit flow rate and then the CO2 concentration as uh, another two um, uh, variables that we need to uh, think about. So, um, so how to start with this? So now number one is that um, once we understand it, we'll then need to go to um, uh, define the uh, KPI or the key performance indicator or the uh, dependent variables or the responses or the Ys, right, simply. So there are so many names for the same thing. So we are going to look at the, the CAPEX. So HISIS will then help us to estimate the CAPEX quickly. So please uh, be aware, disclaimer. So if you don't have any experience yet in um, in cost estimation, don't do this yourself. You have to consult with the cost estimator, experienced ones. Um, and then the, um, once we get the capex, we get the opex um, uh, predicted by ISIS, and then we can have like uh, we can make can look at the dashboard here, uh, uh, so that we can then see how much then CO2 is captured, which means uh, how much CO2 coming here divided by CO2 coming. Um, uh, from the feed gas and then obviously the decision the, the, the decision variables or the independent variables or features or factors or X uh, they are like I mentioned the feed flow rates and then the CO2 concentration and the feed and then the, the amount of amine flow rates and then the reboiler uh, duty um, and then we can use um, uh, in this case we can have um, uh, um, GMP we jump so I'll just, I'll just show you quickly. So we can go to DOE, use easy DOE. It will give you this type of, um, um, of table where we have to define the responses or the X or the Y, sorry, the Y's. And then we define the factors. So I did that already. <coughs> um, in here. So we have... Um, so we have the, the three factors, sorry, the three independent variables, the responses. So we need to minimize both capex and opex, and then we CO2 capture, we just need to match, fix it later on. So I just put none over here. Uh, and then we have all of these factors, the four factors, or so independent variables with their uh, values. And then we can just go next, and then it will then help us to um, say, for example, we want to um, see the main effects two factor interactions and then we want to make it like a surface right so that we can have all factors interacting with each other and then we can then click next it will then um, um, advise us to do this type of uh, runs so these runs can be done if you have your lab you can do it in the lab you can do it also in your plant or you can do it in this case like a pseudo plant this digital twin the simulation model in ISIS. so you can then the, um, and then we can then go click and then we have um, for each of these variations, these runs, we can input uh, what is then the capex, what is then the opex, what is then, what is then the CO2 captured. Yeah. So for example, I key in in the high system later on 0.1 for CO2 feed concentration, fluoride 5000, MDA 500, reboiled 50,000 and then run it 
and then I get the results of CAPEX, put it here, results of OPEX, put it here, and then CO2 captured, put it there. So that's um, one way. And then you can just simply click next, and then you can then um, um, analyze um, the, the data, make some predictions, and then report it. And um, I'm going to show you as well another um, results or another feature where we can do something called like um, um, instead of uh, the easy DOE, if you have already some experiences with the DOE or design of experiments, you can go, uh, you can also go to um, whatever you want because there are so many design of experiments available in Jump that you can use. And then the, for in our case, I just simply use special purpose and then space filling design because there are so many, I mean, the, the range is a bit wide. And then we want to maximize the, um, the, uh, the insights that we can get into the space. Uh, let's click it, and then we get to, to this page where we define the same thing again, responses, factors, and then in this case, uh, we use fast, flexible filling. So once we click it, we uh, will get, um, so, uh, we'll get something like this. Yeah? So um, it will give us the, uh, the type of runs, Run number one, and then the CO2 concentration, fifth floor rate of MEA, floor rate reward duty. So for every of this, every one of these runs, we just simply put it into our lab or experiments, and then get the results uh, correspondingly. So we can also make like a make a table like this, and it will give you this typically the same same uh, concept, this table. Yeah, just fill in this once you do the run. So I did that already. So once I did that. I get something like like this, All right? So I have the CO2 frequency. I mean, these are all the, the the factors or the independent variables. This is then the um, the results of the experiment or so the simulation run. And then for the capex, this is for the opex, this is for the CO2 captured. So once I get these, um, so what to do with the data? Yeah, this is only only for illustration purposes. So I just limit it to ten. And then we can go to um, uh, analyze and then uh, do predictive modeling, and then we can then take model screening. Because we um, we're not really sure yet what type of models. If you have more insights, then you can use your own model. But in this case, to be quickly, uh, just click um, uh, the model screening. We just simply let um, uh, Jump help us with the model. So we want to predict the uh, CAPEX, OPEX, and then CO2 capture. Put it over there. And then the, the X is then this one and then put it over here. And then we just simply yeah, select which one you want. So for example, I just want to have like, I don't know, um, something like this. The rest I don't want to see. It's all really up to you. And then click Run. And then it will give you um, some results. And you can see this, in this case, Neural Boosted is then being the, the, the best of all. So we can then simply use Neural Boosted. And then in this case, um, we can uh, you can evaluate this further. Yeah? You can see, uh, for example, for the capex, you can plot actual versus predicted, and then you can see um, all of these results are there. So, for example, if I want to see bootstrap bootstrap forest, it will look like that. Bootstrap boosted tree looks like that, and then uh, neuro boosted looks like that. Um, and then um, so that's for the capex. You can do the same thing with the opex. And then you could also do something like um, um, save uh, prediction formula. Yeah, you can do so. And then the, and then it will then give you once you click this, and then it will then give you um, something like this. It will give you these whole columns to the right, where all of the um, um, the because it's neural network. It's a neural network. You can see it. Neural network. For example, yeah. You can see um, uh, details. You can see. Go to the details. You then see the neural network, and then um, um, this neural network. You can see the diagram, something like that. And then there are so many uh, calculations, and hence there are so many columns as you can see over here. And then, but eventually you get to the the results, the predicted capex. So just simply in this case, as you can see, I have not the predicted capex over here. Just uh, right click and then insert columns and then uh, add a new column as a predicted capex. And then uh, I just simply say, well, this guy is actually the same as um, the predicted one. So basically just to have 
just to have the two columns um, uh, sitting side by side. As you can see, they are well, uh, relatively okay. Um, so once we get the the model and then have the model into the predicted capex, you can you can make another one here, for example, so point two, and then the, we this then then take um, for example I don't know fit flow rates about six hundred, and then the, the MDEA is about one hundred, and then the rebound duty is about um, forty thousand, and you will get your predicted capex right away, uh, opex right away, and then the um, the CO two captured right away. Uh, so um, there are some errors over here. Again, this is just for illustration purposes. Um, so once you do that, so we have our formula, we have our model, model that we think is the best, and then what to do with the model. So we could use the model to make an optimization of the process because we need to know, okay, for a certain feed flow rate and for a certain uh, CO2 concentration in the feed, what would be the uh, the amine flow rate and what would be the reboilability in such a way that we can keep the CO2 captured uh, constant, and then we minimize the capex and the opex. So that's basically what it is. Yeah. Um, so I repeat, um, uh, given a fixed fit flow rate and then CO2 concentration, because it's a fixed problem on the field, um, um, uh, maintaining the CO2 captured, how much is that the MBA flow rate and then the reboiler flow rate in such a way that the capex and opex for the plant is going to be minimized. So we can go to um, a graph and then profiler, click on this, and then you can then put the prediction formula, which is then the, the predicted capex, opex, and then CO2 capture, put it over there, and then click OK. So I have done that, and then they give me um, this window. All right, so I have this profiler. And then um, you can see um, we in this in jump we just need to maximize the desirability. So what does it mean? Desirability means it's just like uh, because we have like three objectives, uh, so to say, we want to minimize capex, minimize opex, and then the somewhat maintain the CO2 capture. So we just need to maximize the desirability uh, in the sense that we want to make sure that this is going to be. We put weights over here, weights over there, and then weights over there. So I will show you. I go here and then set desirabilities and then say for example minimize um, capex uh, just put by default so over here i don't change anything so this is desirable i want to have it like um, make it because it's minimized so the weight is going to be a lot over here it's going to be a lot of weight here to minimize it and then if i click ok i'll go to the next uh, objective functions it's also to minimize so it's going to be like a, a higher weight over here uh, the importance is 0.33, uh, and then click OK, and then I get the um, the CO2 to match the target. So 0 0.1, 0 0.8 as uh, as one, because uh, I want to make it like 0.8 as close as possible to 0.8, and then click OK, and then the, it will give us this type of desirability function. So in this case, the the lower the the capex, the more desirable it is. Right? So you can see that one. But then for the CO2, uh, I want I am desired I desired it to be like point, um, uh, point 0.8 in this case, whereas I don't really like it. Um, so, and then once we do so, we can simply then um, um, maximize the desirability, click that, and then we get this as the optimum or the yeah, so-called optimum uh, results. So I get to know um, to minimize OPEX and CAPEX in this particular example, obviously I need to have, I need to run it with a very um, close to very low, uh, this is close to the border. Uh, very low CO2 concentration in the feed. Also, the the minimum feed flow rate that I am uh, allowing. Also, also using the the lowest MDEA flow rate, uh, which it still can capture the the 0.8, and then the, using this amount of reboiler duty, and then this then the corresponding capex, opex, and then the CO2 captured. And then the, um, I use this axis into the plant or lab or uh, uh, simulation model. But in this case, um, and then you can see uh, 500 uh, for the flow rate, 50 for the MDA solution, this amount for the reboilability, and then this is the concentration. Run it, and then I get these numbers. So uh, all in all, um, you can see uh, from the jump, uh, uh, right from the design of experiments, um, organizing the data, making the predictions, selecting the model, use the model to do the optimization, 
we come to these numbers uh, and then once we uh, when we run it into uh, a real life uh, situation like in this case the lab or, expert, or lab or plant or simulation model so to say uh, I get this um, these results so this is then the actual results so to so uh, so to say and then this is then the predicted results from jump and you can see well it's not that bad uh, I don't know why this is then going to be uh, this is then uh, too much right but nonetheless this is for illustration purposes only um, um, just follow this workflow you can use um, jump can help you a lot in this case um, and then the, um, um, you need to know that you are moving into the right directions and then you can celebrate your success so um, with that um, thank you very much